Well, welcome to a save showcase. This has been my save for the past three years, culminating in some of my largest projects, laggiest setups, and long sleepless hours of unpacking and placing endless numbers of items. This save has been a solo survival save for the past three years, with a few people joining to roam around the save and visit different planets as I construct more and more. And although the purpose of this was originally in Descript, the ideas are now set in stone. For this reason, and a variety of other problems I've run into while attempting to further my progress on this save, this will be the final farewell for the save. I don't have much footage of the world actually being constructed, as a lot of it was done by free time, so all the footage you've seen today was probably gathered over the past few weeks. Where to begin on this endeavor? The save began on Silva and quickly developed, where I built a home base onto Solo. At this point in the game, automation had just been released and a new feature was discovered. Able to now create materials in large quantities via the scrap glitch, the base quickly expanded and my imagination exploded for the possibilities. Endless rows and rows of platforms, smelters, RTGs, silo bees, chemistry labs all began to appear onto Solo. The first project was a small collection of roughly 900 RTGs. They would serve as power for the entire planet, or so I thought. As I quickly ran out of power, with setups like automated smelters and rows and rows and rows of chemistry labs, I began to realize I needed more. And like every Astroneer player, giant solar arrays were the answer. Okay, maybe just me. With 400 large solar arrays set up, the progress began to slow down. I only needed 800 more, but the monotonous task of printing solar arrays, unpacking them, and then setting them up in a nice, well-organized layout was getting to be too much. I settled for the fact that the base could now produce more power than I thought anyone could ever use, for only two-thirds of the day. This was completely acceptable, since 4,000 units per second was already being produced 24-7, and I couldn't imagine a save where I'd ever use any more than that. But I didn't have to imagine for much longer. I began by building a larger scrap glitch setup, limiting its size to only produce a few thousand scrap every 8 hours while I slept. This required more than 4 trade platforms to convert the scrap into resources, so I spent hours constructing an automated trade platform setup, and then spent hours figuring out how I actually needed to automate it. This was my first turtle, but it didn't last long as I brute forced it. The farm even had filters on extra large platform bees. This was by far my motivation to continue to push the limit on what could be built in this game. I needed to store all of these resources somewhere, so I flattened out some ground and placed a few extra large type C's with a collection of large resource canisters. For now, this would be enough storage. Finally, I could draw up my first big project. Glacio had been known and will probably forever be known for its research opportunities, my favorite being the research samples found sparsely distributed throughout the caves of Glacio. I spent a short time thinking of a setup, and then spent hours on a rover with some materials, printers, and printing all of the platforms while I slowly traversed the cave. This became my great achievement. I was proud to boast an average byte per minute rate of 2,300. At the time, I would have never known where my ambition would take me. First were the gas stations. Silva, of course, nitrogen and hydrogen, and being the first station, it was a bad prototype for what would be next. Crude and with many faults, I would learn quickly from my mistakes. Next was Glacio, the beast of all of the stations. With just over 61,000 units of storage, it was the largest storage for any single gas my save possessed. This was by far the pride of my stations. It had everything, maybe a bit too much of everything, but these were the projects I intended to conquer. Only one problem, I was running out of power. Glacio had plenty of RTGs, so it didn't need many either, and Kalidor, well, it was the small station, since it only had sulfur. And these are atmospheric condensers. You didn't need them at 100% power all the time, just as long as they produced the gas I need and had enough volume that they wouldn't run out. Then there was Aatrox, the last of the gas stations, and my patience was getting lower every day. I just wanted it done at this point. The project seemed to run on every day and every night, so I quickly slapped together some RTGs, a few silo bees, and called it quits. This was the end. 
My computer could only handle so much. Being very laggy and running at 30 FPS, or more than likely less, I decided to do one last project. Chemistry labs. I constructed a prototype, again and again, and then began working on expanding it. Slowly, the project began to take shape. Eventually, it would be complete, and I would leave the save behind. Not forgotten, but without the intent to play again. Months later, I decided to get back into Astroneer, play around on my save, and see if they had changed anything. I noticed I was getting better FPS, and that the scrap glitch was going to be removed. In a panic, for the entire foundations of my save lay upon the success of the scrap farm, I constructed a small tunnel to store 200,000 scrap. I wasn't thinking, I was just doing. It turns out I never filled this museum with any scrap. Almost no resource actually ever touched the monument to storage. Instead, I took another respite. The save was hard work. It wasn't a cool, chill playthrough anymore. It was just ambitious sitting there by itself, without a player in it, or with. I had to do something good. But there was nothing left to do, until it struck me. I had heard about some bite farms, people working to reach a million bites or even more. I thought the goal would be a good one, so I began working on a gas research station. The first of its kind. Crude, improvised, and leeching off of the Argon station, it worked. Somewhat. I decided to scrap the entire project in favor of a prototype. An idea I had. I immediately went to Aatrox. I was going to research methane. I had never dealt with methane as a research item before, so I had to learn what, if at all, kind of potential it had. My options were that or helium. Methane seemed like the optimum choice. It researched at 160 bytes per minute, and unlike helium, it had a high concentration on Atrox, which meant I could use less atmospheric condensers and therefore less power. The prototype used the power provided by the gas station. Since the gas station was full, it couldn't hurt. The rates were good. It was able to produce over 30,000 bytes per minute at peak output. Oh yeah, did I mention I like lag? At this point, I tasted gold and I wanted more. The next step was to construct a place for the power, so that I could more efficiently run the prototype farm, and run another farm, far, far away. We're now looking at roughly 2,000 RTGs. It's actually a bit less than that due to some missing Type-C platforms. However, it still just barely covers the margins for the prototype farm and Black Valley. I began nicknaming the projects. This one got the nickname Black Valley because the sun never really appeared since it was at a pole. The project consumed a lot of my time, requiring just under one month to flatten the valley, place all 378 extra large Type-C's, and then followed by nearly 800 research chambers. The difference was this station had an RTG and an auto arm, instead of just two auto arms like the prototype. I figured the machine would function with just one, so there was no need to increase the power requirement by 400. This feature of the save increased the bytes per minute by 90,000. 90,000. You could research every item in the catalog in three minutes, assuming you could click quick enough. But even this didn't cool my ambition. At this point, all I wanted was to reach 1 billion bytes, and I had heard that some people had already gotten there. A YouTuber named Prozelli Gaming had posted a few videos where he had shown he reached a few billion. I did some math, constructed a timescale, and planned. For the next month, I would dedicate as much time as I could to beat Brozelli Gaming to 10 billion bytes. Little did I know, his bytes per minute were a few less than mine. Ah, oh, fuck. Why did I do this to myself? Alright, this is Red Plains, the final installment in my series of horrible time-wasting ideas. Oh yeah, I had moved the save to a server, so I could get bytes 24-7. Oh, and because the lag was unbearable. At this point in the build, I had run into some issues. Oh, and their fucking rover's gone. Nice. Yeah, I had to sit in the rover for three to five seconds before I could get out, or it would snap back to wherever it was before I moved it. Thankfully, after almost two months of work and probably a couple hours of sitting on this screen, 
I had finally finished the farm. Wait, sunglasses? No sunglasses? Fuck it, I already recorded this clip. Alright, now Red Plains was given the name Red Plains for a reason, right? I mean, the project was complete. We already had Black Valley, and it was called Black Valley because the sun never shone its face. What about Red Plains? Well, I thought that every project should have a code name that follows. Random color, plus a general idea of where it is built. Yeah, I'm really good at coming up with project names. That does mean Aatrox has planes. You know, I don't really know. Anyways, the Red Plains project was complete, and I was finally done. Now that I had sideswiped everyone's dream out of the window, my goal was 100 billion bytes. Eventually. How long to 100 billion bytes for my farm? Oh shit. Well, Red Plains had taken everything. We had 3,168 RTGs, 566 extra large platform seas, 1,000 research chambers, 500 atmosphere condensers, 500 auto arms, 264 silo bees, and a fucking rovers. Yeah, that happened a lot. Well, the project was finally done. Oh, did I mention this all exploded at one point? Good thing there are backups. With nearly half a year of work, all in all, the farms combined consumed about 12 canisters of methane every second, produced 4,716 bytes per second, and when the research chambers got changed, they got amped to the extreme. Without getting too much into it, the chambers could now take things off of platforms and automatically research those things, whereas previously only auto arms could put things in the chambers, thus automating it, making the project now 100% efficient at least in terms of what was possible. Now I didn't think my save would ever come to this, and I can't tell you the number of times I thought I lost everything, but I am so thankful it is still here. At this point in time, I would like to say a few things. One, thank you to a player named Dorfin, who stuck around for hours on end to place 2,000 RTGs with me on Silo B's for Black Valley. Two, I know there are some people out there who are working towards higher numbers, bigger goals, more efficient farms, etc, etc, and I'm glad to hear it. However, a word of warning, the research chambers can memory leak, so please back up your saves frequently, and try to take a break every once in a while. It is cool and fun to do this, because big number kind of funny, but it isn't very healthy, at least socially. And three. Thank you to the System Era Dev team. I know I might not play your game as intended, but if nothing else, it has been a motivating experience and a great journey, excluding some of the more extreme hiccups along the way. Oh, and there's fucking rovers gone. Nice. Oh, and if you're thinking of getting this game, the harsh truth is, why haven't you? All right, with those things out of the way, Oh, I'm sure you want to see big numbers, so for the rest of the... I'm writing the script right now, but um, the remainder-ish of the video, I'll let you watch the bites climb. Thank you. Enjoy.
Well, welcome to the end. The project is over. I will attempt to make the save available publicly, however, for the majority of those out there, your machine will be unable to effectively run the save. In a few short moments, the server will be turned off and the bytes will cease to collect anymore. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I would like to say to those who stick around, I will likely not post consistently anymore. I have not done so for the past few years, and I will continue to not do so. However, if you would like to see something, post your idea below, and I will attempt to create a video as soon as possible. Make sure you're subbed with notifications on, so that you can see when that video comes out. Again, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed. Until a future date.